Hello, and welcome to this section of the Calculus Derivative Help Tutor. And in the last section, we introduced the chain rule. So we talked about the fact that uh, to apply that, you have to have an outer function with an inner function sort of nested. And this nesting can continue to go as deep as you want. Of course, your derivative will be more complicated, but there's no limit to how many layers you could put. Uh, but on a typical test, you'll have two layers or maybe three layers maximum, because beyond that, it just gets to be uh, really ugly to deal with. So we've gotten some good practice on how to do the fundamentals. Here what we're going to do is work some additional problems, slightly more complicated, uh, but I really want you to understand that there's really nothing fundamentally harder about it. It's just really the algebra. I think I've shown you through this point, calculus is not hard. The rules of calculus is not hard. It's the algebra that becomes a bear when you have all the simplification to do. So you really have to be strong in that. So what we're going to do is do some challenging problems, indicative of what you might see on your test. Uh, and if you guys can do these, and the extra ones that you can find in your book, in your textbook, uh, you'll be absolutely uh, fine and comfortable dealing with the chain rule. So let's say we had a function f of x is equal to x times the square root of 2 minus 7x squared. All right. So notice here that this is immediately more complicated for two reasons. One, we know we have a nesting going on because we have a square root function and inside of that guy is another function. So that's more complicated. But to make it even harder, on the outside of this, we have another function, x. So a lot of students might look at this and really don't know where to start, but you have to peel back the onion. First thing I always tell people to do is always rewrite these functions with radicals as the following in this case, 2 minus 7x squared to the 1 half. This is much easier to read, even though you have a fractional exponent, because here you know you have an exponent here, so you're going to be using your exponent rule. The inner function is fairly easy to deal with in this case. The only real wrench is that you have this guy out here. All right. Uh, what you need to realize is that ultimately, at the big picture point of view, you have two broad functions here. You have this function multiplied by this large function. What do we do when we have two functions multiplied by one another? we use the product rule. We, we've done the product rule over and over. It's just that this second function is kind of ugly. Uh, we're going to end up using the chain rule on this part of it here because we have a nesting. But don't forget the larger part is the product rule that we have going on here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use the product rule as the outermost thing because that's really what's going on here. So what's the product rule? It's the first function times the derivative of the second function plus the second function times the derivative of the first function. So let's go and do that. It's the first function times the derivative of the second function. So we'll have 2 minus 7x squared raised to the 1 half power. First times the derivative of the second function. That's what this means. Plus the second function, 2 minus 7x squared raised to the 1 half times the derivative of the first function over here, right there. Notice I haven't taken any, any derivatives yet because if you start trying to do it all in one step, Feel first times the derivative of the second. If I started trying to take this derivative on top of everything else early on in your study of calculus, you're just going to make a mistake. So write it out like this. And then in the next step, it's very simple. Well, simple is not the right word, but it's much more straightforward to go in here and say, OK, I have this x. Now how do I handle this derivative? Tackle that guy. When I get over here, how do I handle this derivative? Well, when we're here, we have this nested function going on. So we have to use the chain rule. So what you're going to have, the outer function, is this exponent. So you'll have 1 half. The inner guy is going to stay the same, just like we've been doing in the other problems. We subtract 1 off the exponent, and we're going to get negative 1 half. But we can't stop there, because we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. Now this is simple enough, where I'm just going to take the derivative right here. The derivative of 2 is 0. The derivative of this, 2 times 7 is 14. We have a negative, so it's negative 14x. Right? So this is the derivative of this whole term is what we have here. We have the outer guy with subtracting the exponent times the derivative of what we have in the middle. So we're done with that. All right? And then after we do that, we're going to have over here plus 2 minus 7x squared to the 1 half. What's the derivative of x? Well, it's just 1. So that, that's very, very simple at the end. Okay? All right. So what we need to do here is combine everything that we have here. So we'll have f prime of x, let me get a better marker here, f prime of x is equal to 14 divided by 2 is 7. We have a negative here, so we'll have negative 7 
x times x gives me x squared, and then we have this guy, 2 minus 7x squared to the negative 1 half, okay? And then over here we have 2 minus 7x squared to the positive 1 half. So we have is negative 7x squared, 2 minus 7x squared to the negative 1 half plus 2 minus 7x squared to the positive 1 half. Now truth be told, this is the answer. I mean it really is. Uh, but just like in this course I'm trying to teach you your algebra skills at the same time, there is a way to simplify this that your teacher might like to see a little bit more, so let's go ahead and get some practice with that. Let's rewrite everything. Negative 7x squared, on the bottom we're going to have 2 minus 7x squared to the positive 1 half. All I did was take this whole term and move it down. Over here you're going to have 2 minus 7x squared to the 1 half over 1, because this is always over 1, right? Now what we have is two nice terms we would like to add together, so we have to try to find a common denominator. The easiest way to do that is to multiply this by this guy, 2 minus 7x squared to the 1 half. If we multiply it on the bottom, we have to multiply it on the top. Right? So we only do this so that we can get a common denominator across both sides. But a nice thing happens once we do it. We have f prime of x. All right. On the top, what are we going to have? We have uh, negative 7x squared over 2 minus 7x squared to the power of 1 half. And then over here on the right hand side, we have this multiplied by this, but notice the bases are exactly the same, so we just add the exponents. So 1 half plus 1 half is 1, so all you'll have is on top is 2 minus 7x squared. And on the bottom, 1 times this is going to give us what we wanted to get, 2 minus 7x squared raised to the power of 1 half. So we have a common denominator, which is the only reason we did that. So let's go ahead and add these two fractions, f prime of x. Notice that when we add this to this, uh, we have 7x squared and negative 7x squared. So what we're going to have is, let's put the 2 out in front, minus 14 x squared because these are simply added together. On the bottom we keep the same common denominator, 2 minus 7x squared to the 1 half. Now you could write the bottom as a radical if you prefer, but ultimately this is the answer. So this is pretty significantly more simplified than what we have up here. But this is, this is the derivative. You could leave it just like that. But anytime you see terms with such a common theme to them, it's a, probably a good idea to spend a minute to see if you can simplify them at all. So we just find the common denominator. Once we do this, it drastically simplifies the numerator. The denominator stays the same. 2 minus 14x squared over uh, what amounts to the square root of 2 minus 7x squared. But ultimately, it's the same process. We take the derivatives using the rules that we know. If we get to a derivative that's nested, then we end up using the chain rule. 